Albert Einstein. He would one day be called the greatest genius of the modern age. But before the fame and the Nobel Prize, Albert Einstein was simply a quiet boy from Germany, slow to speak and often misunderstood. He was born in 1879 in the small city of Ulm. As a child, he was fascinated by invisible forces. When his father handed him a compass, he couldn't stop staring at the needle that moved on its own. He later said that moment changed everything. It made him realize that something unseen must lie behind everything in nature. But school didn't see him that way. Teachers called him lazy, distracted, and even defiant. He hated rote memorization, the kind that killed curiosity. At 15, he left school in Germany altogether, chasing freedom over conformity. A year later, he applied to the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich, but he failed the entrance exam. His grades in math and physics were exceptional, but in languages and history, they were disastrous. He had to wait another year before he could try again. When he finally graduated, no one wanted him. He sent letter after letter to schools and universities, begging for a position as a teacher or assistant. Every single one was rejected. He felt invisible, a man with ideas no one wanted to hear. So he took what he could get, a job as a third-class clerk at the Swiss Patent Office in Bern. By day, he examined other people's inventions. By night, he imagined chasing beams of light. Even when he applied for a teaching role in 1907, the University of Bern rejected his application. Some thought his theories were too radical, more art than physics. Others dismissed him for not following academic protocol. He was a man destined to change science, held back by paperwork. But Einstein never stopped thinking. And in 1905, from that tiny desk in Bern, he published four papers that shook the foundations of physics, light as energy packets, atoms in motion, the special theory of relativity, and a simple perfect equation, E equals mc squared. At first, few understood him. Years later, even as his name became known around the world, one of his papers was rejected in peer review, the only time it ever happened. The editor who declined it had no idea he was turning down Albert Einstein. His life was built on rejection, from schools, from universities, and from the establishment itself. But every no became fuel for the next idea. Every failure pushed him closer to the truth that would change how we see the universe today. The world didn't open its doors for him, so he built a new one. And he wouldn't be the last genius to be told he wasn't enough. Nikola Tesla. The present is theirs. The future, for which I really worked, is mine. And he was right. But when Nikola Tesla said those words, the world had already turned its back on him. Born in 1856 in a small village called Smilyan, Tesla grew up surrounded by imagination. His father was a priest. His mother, an inventor at heart, built simple machines by hand. From her, he inherited a mind that could see electricity before the world ever understood it. As a student, he could perform complex calculus in his head, but he never finished university. He dropped out, he gambled, he got sick, and yet his obsession with energy never left him. In 1884, he arrived in America with a single suitcase and a head full of ideas. He went to work for Thomas Edison, the man the world already called a genius. But when he asked for his promised $50,000 reward, Edison laughed. So Tesla quit the next day. He tried again, this time with his own company. His investors abandoned him, took his patents, and left him broke. He dug ditches for $2 a day just to survive, but even underground, he was still thinking above the clouds. He built the first alternating current motor, the system that would power the modern world. Westinghouse bought his patents, and for a moment, Tesla finally had the recognition he deserved. Then came the War of Currents. Edison called his electricity dangerous. He even electrocuted animals in public just to prove it. But history chose differently. Tesla's AC system won. It lit the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 and brought power to Niagara Falls. And yet, his greatest dream was still ahead. Wardenclyffe Tower, a global wireless network that would transmit messages and even energy through the air. He convinced J.P. Morgan to fund it. But when Tesla revealed his plan to make electricity free for everyone, Morgan refused to give him another cent. The dream died unfinished. As the years passed, his ideas became too wild for investors. Wireless energy, death rays, flying machines. Some called him a prophet, but most called him insane. He spent his final years alone in New York hotels, feeding pigeons and living on milk and honey. He died in 1943, penniless. While the world ran on his inventions, they stole his ideas. They ignored his warnings. They even mocked his vision. But the truth is, they're all living in his future. The present was theirs. The future, the one we live in, was his. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was never meant to become the world's greatest inventor. At school, teachers called him 
Too stupid to learn anything, he was restless, constantly asking questions no one could answer. Eventually, his mother pulled him out of school and decided to teach him at home, a decision that changed history. Young Edison was endlessly curious. He spent his childhood experimenting in the basement, nearly burning the house down once while testing chemicals. He didn't learn by listening, he learned by doing. And when a childhood illness left him almost completely deaf, he turned even that into an advantage. He later said that silence helped him concentrate. While the world called it a curse, he saw it as a gift. But life didn't spare him from rejection. His first invention, an electric vote recorder, was immediately rejected by Congress. Lawmakers said it was too efficient. They preferred the slower system that gave them time to manipulate votes. Edison was crushed, but that failure taught him a rule he'd never forget. Build only what the world truly needs. He was fired from his first jobs for being unproductive. He was broke, often skipping meals to buy materials for experiments. And when he finally created something the world would use, the light bulb, it didn't happen overnight. He tested over 10,000 materials, cotton, cardboard, even human hair, before finding one that worked. But he never stopped. He famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Even after success, rejection never left him. During the War of Currents, his direct current system was crushed by Nikola Tesla's alternating current. Public opinion turned against him. His company was taken over by investors, and his name, once the symbol of progress, was nearly forgotten. Then came disaster. In 1914, a massive fire destroyed his laboratory, years of research gone overnight. When his son found him watching the flames, Edison said calmly, Go get your mother. She'll never see a fire like this again. The next morning, he went back to work at 67 years old starting again from nothing. Through all the ridicule, the losses, and the failures, Edison never gave up and proved that genius isn't about never failing. It's about never stopping. Isaac Newton Isaac Newton was born on January 4, 1643, in Woolsthorpe, a small village in England. He came into the world premature, so small that no one thought he would survive. His father had died months before his birth, and when he was just three years old, his mother left him behind to remarry a wound that would shape his solitude for life. He grew up withdrawn, silent, and lost in thought. At school, he wasn't considered talented. Teachers said he was distracted, slow, and constantly daydreaming. But behind that silence was a mind building entire worlds. His mother wanted him to become a farmer, but he had no interest in the fields. He wanted to understand the invisible forces that moved everything around him. Eventually, he was sent to Cambridge, where his real journey began. Then came the Great Plague of 1665. The university closed, and Newton returned home, isolated and alone. But it was in that isolation that his genius awakened. In those two silent years in Woolsthorpe, he discovered the laws of motion, gravity, and the nature of light, all before his 25th birthday. Yet when he finally shared his discoveries, the world did not applaud. His paper on light and color was harshly rejected. Critics, including the influential scientist Robert Hooke, accused him of arrogance and error. Humiliated and hurt, Newton withdrew completely from public life. For years, he refused to publish or even discuss his work. When he returned, he did so with a vengeance. He published Principia Mathematica, one of the greatest scientific works in history. It changed everything. But success did not bring him peace. Newton's life was filled with conflict. He fought bitterly with Hooke and Leibniz, obsessed with proving his own superiority. He became isolated once again, not by the world, but by his own mind. Behind his fame, there was a secret universe only he explored. Newton spent decades studying alchemy and biblical prophecy, convinced that science and faith were one. He rejected the church's official doctrines, believing the truth of the universe was hidden beneath centuries of corruption. Those writings were so controversial that they remained secret for hundreds of years. He also struggled with his own mind, sinking into depression or working endlessly without sleep. Some believe Mercury from his experiments poisoned him, feeding the chaos inside. But even through darkness and rejection, Newton never stopped searching. He showed that sometimes the greatest breakthroughs are born not from applause, but from silence. Charles Darwin Charles Darwin was born on February 12, 1809 in Shrewsbury, England, the fifth of six children in a wealthy family. From an early age, Darwin was more interested in collecting beetles and studying plants than following his father's dream of making him a doctor or a clergyman. He wasn't a prodigy nor a particularly disciplined student, but his endless curiosity about nature set him apart. At 22, his life changed forever. He joined the voyage of the HMS Beagle as a naturalist, a journey that would last five long years. What began as an adventure quickly became a test of endurance. Darwin battled severe seasickness, anxiety, and isolation. 
Yet, through the sickness and solitude, he observed patterns that no one else had noticed. Fossils of extinct animals resembled living ones. Birds and tortoises on different islands had small but significant variations. Nature, he realized, wasn't fixed. It was changing. When he returned to England in 1836, he was no longer the same man. Quietly, in his notebooks, he began piecing together a revolutionary idea that all species, including humans, evolved through a process he called natural selection. But to say it aloud was unthinkable. To challenge creation itself meant confronting religion, academia, and the very foundation of human belief. So Darwin waited. For more than 20 years, he refined his theory in silence. He suffered chronic illness, severe pain, trembling, and what today might be called panic attacks. He saw more than 20 doctors, but none could explain what was wrong. But his real torment wasn't physical. It was the fear of rejection, of unleashing an idea that could divide the world. In 1851, tragedy struck. His 10-year-old daughter Annie, the child he loved most, died after months of illness. Her death shattered him and whatever remained of his faith in God. Darwin, once a devout believer, could no longer see divine mercy in the natural world. Yet even in despair, he kept working. He believed that understanding nature might reveal a truth higher than any doctrine. In 1859, On the Origin of Species was published. The world was stunned. Many called him a heretic, others a genius. His ideas were debated in churches, classrooms, and scientific halls across the world. The backlash deepened his anxiety, but Darwin did not fight back. He simply let the evidence speak. Darwin's health continued to decline, but his conviction never faltered. He showed that life is not static. It evolves, adapts, and transforms through struggle. His theory rewrote humanity's place in the universe and changed science forever. He faced rejection from the world, yet he never stopped searching for truth. Because sometimes the courage to question everything is what changes everything.